everybody, Adam Parks here with another episode of Receivables Roundtable. Today I have a very special guest. I have Miss Liz Terry from the National Creditors Bar Association, also known as NCBA. Um, how are you doing today, Liz? I'm well. How are you, Adam? I'm doing very well. Thanks um, for having for, me. Yeah, thank you. Um, for those that uh, are not familiar with you yet, can you tell us a little bit about you know, your time with NCBA? Yeah, I am about eight days is actually a week out from my one-year anniversary of joining NCBA as executive director. Prior to that, I have um, worked in the financial services space, but for other trade associations here in Washington, D.C. Excellent. Now, the National Creditors Bar Association, that's a mouthful. Can you tell us a little bit about the organization itself? Yeah, so we are the trade association dedicated to creditors' rights attorneys. So our member firms are law firms that work on behalf of creditors. Um, to help them collect on outstanding debts. And that can be anything from, you know, the big national banks, credit card companies, debt buyers, all the way to um, a local business or municipality. Awesome. So uh, the NCBA conference in October is going to be in Scottsdale. It's the first time that I'm going on site for a conference since RMAI back in February. So I'm very excited to get back on the road. For someone that lives on the road, uh, you know, COVID has definitely been challenging for me. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about what we can expect out there for the live conference. Sure. So we did a lot of work um, talking to our members and others in the industry to figure out what was the right mix in order to have a successful event um, in Scottsdale. Um, and what we heard was that there were still people who aren't comfortable traveling, but there were also a lot of people who wanted to travel. Um, so we adapted our programming based on the type of people who are who are able and willing to travel. So for instance, a lot of the largest creditors aren't traveling at all for the rest of the calendar year. So we weren't going to plan on them for our typical client meetings. Um, instead, where, what we were seeing was a lot of the owners, managing partners, um, and other attorneys from our member firms had the flexibility to travel and were really interested in talking more um, on issues around practice management, effective practice management, how to, um, how to run your business in a COVID environment, those types of things. Um, so we will be focusing on those issues. Um, we expect about 75 to 100 people, um, probably 55 to 75 attorneys, plus some speakers, vendors, um, and, and others in the industry that are, that are willing and able to travel. Awesome. Well, full disclosure, I'll be out there uh, yeah. presenting on the marketing and PR side of the world under the Branding Arc umbrella, which I'm very much looking forward to. It's actually the first time I'm attending a conference as Branding Arc in many, many years, um, yeah. because it's kind of been like one of those hidden organizations that provides a lot of services to the industry, but we haven't really uh, been out there promoting it. So I'm very much looking forward to coming out there um, wearing a new hat and um, you know, kind of getting involved there. I'm also really excited about the golf uh, event that's going to be happening there. Yeah participating and sponsoring that. Um, yep. How many golfers are, do you think you guys are expecting? We, we have a lot of interest. We haven't officially opened the registration for that, but of basically we'll open it first to all the, atten the attorney attendees. And there are some sponsors like yourself who will then take out a foursome. Um, so once we fill those, we'll, we'll open it up beyond, beyond just the attorneys as well. So. Very much looking forward to that. I think I think Arizona is going to be a really gorgeous course. I've been kind of checking it out. Yeah, so it's a really it's a great course. I've I've been there before. They do a nice job. Yeah, JW Marriott's usually a pretty nice place to go. <laughs> um, so I know that there's uh, you know kind of a, a technical aspect or a virtual aspect to this conference, and then there's also this in person aspect. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like and how those two parts come together? Yeah. Um, so. Like I said, we, we polled our membership to try and figure out who could be there and who, who wasn't likely to travel. And what we ended up with was um, there are a lot of people who rely on our typical education track for their CLEs. Um, and while they may or may not be able to travel, they still need those CLEs. And so we decided to move the CLE aspect of our conference to a virtual platform. Um, and at least I don't really care to sit in front of the computer staring at, at someone else's PowerPoint for eight hours a day. So rather than do it all in one day, we've spread it out. Um, 
we did three sessions in July, three in August. There's three uh, actually tomorrow, Wednesday, um, the 23rd, I guess that is. Um, and um, then we will have a two day event in October that's virtual while you and I are in Arizona, there'll be a virtual aspect. Um, and we just recently announced expanding that again for um, there'll be a post election recap for how the election results may affect our industry. Um, that's actually free and open to all. And then we have a couple more CLEs offered in November and a couple more in December. So ultimately, uh, our conference typically would have 10 to 14 CLE credits available. And we are going to be getting to just about 12 if you if you participated across all those different months. Wow, that's that's fantastic. I mean, it sounds like a great program and I'm very much looking forward to hearing some insights post election when we have some yeah. information. And hopefully at that point we'll have some additional clarity on some of the rules coming down from the regulators as well. Yeah. Hopefully. Yep, they're yeah, they're definitely <laughs> going to focus on the debt collection rules. Um like we have multiple um virtual events to cover that and if we're lucky enough that they get dropped while we're in Arizona, I'm sure we'll shift around things and make sure that we evaluate that as well. <laughs> totally understood. Totally understood. I, th I think it's really interesting the way that you guys have, have created some separation there and somebody who wants to be in person can also get some of these virtual aspects. I think that's a, a very interesting um, yep. approach to that. And I know I'll be on sessions tomorrow kind of watching, even though I'm not a lawyer and I don't need CLE credits. I think it's always interesting to learn about the different aspects and points of view in our industry and yep. to try and understand how different types of organizations are working together and coming together to solve really what ultimately amounts to common problems, right? Whether yeah. you're an attorney, a debt buyer, or a collection agency, I mean, we are all facing uh, many of the same problems and and looking at the creative ways that we that people are, are solving those issues, I think is always yeah. uh, is always an interesting topic. Absolutely. So as we you know as we prepare for this conference, is there anything else that uh, that we should know or, or be prepared for uh, you know at the upcoming event? Well, we're we're getting creative and making um, making as much of this be uh, outdoors as possible. Um, you know, we're, we're obviously going to be thinking following CDC and, um, and Arizona's rules around social distancing. So uh, the space will be very large for the number of people we have there, but um, it should make it for a comfortable space for all. Um, and, and like I said, it'll, Arizona air, it'll be nice to have some of those receptions outside and, and give a little bit more space that way too. So um, I think that's probably the, the gist of it. Did I miss anything you wanted me to hit on? No, no, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm actually looking forward to Arizona in October. I think that yeah. that time of year, the weather is going to be just right, especially coming from muggy Florida. I can really <laughs> appreciate, uh, you know, the lack of humidity in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, the dry air. Yeah, so very much looking forward to that. So, um, you know, thank you very much for coming on today. Uh, you know, I really just wanted to get people information about this upcoming event. I'm very excited to be attending it and wanted to do what we could to, to kind of spread the good word about it. Um, for those of you watching, if you have any additional questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to make a comment below. Uh, if there's additional content that you'd like to see or additional guests that you'd like to have us uh, talk with on Receivables Roundtable, we'd be happy to do that. Just leave a comment below. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and share our content and help us spread the good word within the receivables management industry. So thank you, Liz. I greatly appreciate you. you coming on today. Appreciate it. I'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks a Absolutely. lot. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.